Hey guys, Pastor Matt here. Well, the background has changed just a little bit. We are supposed to be showing you a recording of a live uh, service that we did today at our drive-in church. We had a great time, a great service, great worship, but the both cameras we used uh, decided it was way too hot for them, so they shut off on us. So we are re-posting uh, this. And I hope you enjoy the sermon. We are going to deal with fishing. We're going to deal with a fish fry and uh, letting the God's fire light us up. I hope you enjoy it. And, uh, have a great week. Enjoy the sermon. Love you. We'll see you soon. Good morning. Well, we're going to dive into scripture today. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead, go ahead and turn to uh, John 14. And we're going to start in verse number 36. That's John 14. 36. It says this, Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But why can't I come with you now, Lord? He asked, I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, die for me? I'll tell you the truth, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times that you even know me. In 1962, on May 27th, a small town in Pennsylvania changed forever. Centralia, Pennsylvania was a productive coal mining town for a century in Pennsylvania at this time. But in 1962, that all changed. So it was an attempt to clean up the landfill before the Memorial Day weekend. They're going to do a big celebration, a get-together, a party, uh, a, a big town thing, and um, they want to kind of clean it up. And uh, so this is not the first time they've done this. They would actually ask the volunteer uh, firemen to come and, and kind of burn the landfill to kind of clean it all up, and then they're going to have the festivities for Memorial Day weekend. So they hired five uh, volunteer fire company uh, individuals to come and, and, and burn the dump, and then they did. They burned the dump, and uh, instead of putting everything out, apparently deep down within the fire, it, it was still hot. So an unsealed, what it says, an unsealed opening in the landfill that nobody knew was there, they weren't aware of it, nothing like that. Uh, the fire got through this unsealed opening and entered the labyrinth of an abandoned coal mines beneath the town. So the town, by law at this time, was supposed to uh, install a fire-resistant clay barrier in between each layer of the garbage. So what would happen, they would collect all the garbage, they lay it all flat as best they could, and they would put this clay barrier to protect it. Because when they do fires, they want to make sure they can control the fire the best they can. But they fell behind scheduling-wise, so they left some of the barrier incomplete. Uh, the unsealed opening. This allowed the hot coals to penetrate the vein of, coal, uh, of, of the coal underneath the town itself. And the rest, they say, is history. As a matter of fact, if you look up the town to this day, uh, that fire from 1962 is still burning. So, what would, what would a charcoal fire, what would a coal fire due to a coal community and its economy. Well, it's pretty devastating. So great, before the uh, fire took place in 1950, Centralia had a population of around 2,000 residents. In 1980, now at that point, it's, it's been 18 years since the fire started. So 1962 started the fire. In 1980, there was 1,000 people, so a drop of 50%. In 1990, 10 years after that, there was 63 people in the town. In 2017, there was five people remaining in the town. Now those five individuals were allowed to live out the rest of their lives there, and after which the rights of their homes will be taken through eminent domain, which means the government would come in and take the land. They knew that the people could not take their land and give it to the family members, nothing like that. The, the government was gonna take it because it was, it was, it was a fire underneath the, the ground still. So that's one devastating coal fire. 
Last Sunday was Resurrection Sunday. It was Easter. It was um, a couple days before then was Good Friday. And I was looking at the schedule of Good Friday. And Good Friday was a very busy day. Uh, in the Gospels, when you read all the Gospels, you'll, you'll put this all these items together that we all know these stories. We've all heard these stories. But I just want to kind of kind of make sure we're all on the same page of how busy Good Friday was. So the very beginning of Good Friday, there was a plot to kill Jesus. So Caiaphas, the high priest, got all the other priests and the, 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 the leading uh, church leaders at that time. They got together and they kind of, we need to get Jesus. We need to get him out of here. We, they, they conspired against him. So that was taking place on Good Friday. At the same time, Jesus is actually anointed at Bethany. And if you guys know the story where Mag Mary Magdalene comes in with the alabaster jar. She takes the perfume, puts it on Jesus' head, puts it on his feet, takes her hair and wipes his feet. That all takes place at, or, or, excuse me, on Good Friday. It's also where the time where Judas got upset because he saw this very expensive perfume being used in that manner. And he, being the righteous person he was, told Jesus and everybody in the room, why, what, what a waste. You, you could have taken that perfume and sold it and give the money to the poor. In, in, in return, Jesus rebukes that situation and Jesus decides to betray him at that moment. So he leaves, finds Caiaphas, and they have the conversation about what would you give me if I give you Jesus? And that's when they told him 30 pieces of silver. So that was all Good Friday. Uh, later uh, that evening, Jesus leads his disciples to the upper room. They have the Last Supper there, communion. Uh, Jesus predicts Peter's denial. Uh, when Jesus looked, he says, all my, all, my B all my friends, all my BFFs, they're going to desert me soon. And Peter said, oh, well, not me. I, I will never desert you. These slacker punks over here might... might, might uh, uh, desert you, but never me. Remember, Lord, you name me Peter, the rock. And I'm telling you now, the rock will never leave you. So Jesus' response, now listen, I, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever met someone like this, uh, someone who's nar narcissist and, and um, just knows it all and, and just always has something to say. And most of the time, we do pretty good. We, we bite our tongue, we just kind of let it go because it's not really worth fighting about. I, I don't know if he did this, but it just seems like Jesus has just had enough of Peter. And, and, and Jesus turns and says, you know, I'll tell you what, Peter, before the rooster crows, you're going to deny me three times that you even know me. So Jesus, from there, leads his uh, disciples to Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, they, they, they pray there. And uh, that's where Jesus, we read about when Jesus is sitting and praying, one of the most uh, famous prayers that he does, if there's any possibility for this cup to pass by me, yet not my will be done, but yours. Uh, he then turns and sees the disciples, comes back and sees them sleeping. He says, you couldn't, you, you, you couldn't pray? You, you couldn't stay watch for one hour? One hour and you couldn't do this? He also, during his prayer time, that's where he sweats the blood. All this is Good Friday. Soon after that, you can you can almost see the picture of the, 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 the fire torches coming towards them when Judas is lead, leading the group. Judas goes and finds Jesus, kisses him on the cheek. Uh, Jesus is arrested. In the process of being arrested, Peter takes out his sword, cuts off one of the soldier's ears. Jesus has had enough. He grabs the ear, puts it back on them, uh, back on the man, and, and heals his ear. He's arrested. They take him to... Um, uh, they take him to court uh, before the council and the high priest. Uh, it's at that moment where Peter actually falls from behind. And um, he, in, in John chapter 18, uh, the servant girl actually sees him and recognizes him and says, Man, aren't you an apostle? I'm, I'm pretty sure you're an apostle. He says, oh, no, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I don't know the man. Then soon after that, a servant girl, another servant girl comes and says, I'm telling you, you look like him, you act like him, you dress like them. I, I think you're an apostle. He says, no, I don't, I don't know the man. And finally, a bystander, the Bible says, comes and says, I'm telling you, you're an apostle. You're, you're one of them. You're with Jesus. 
And then he gets so mad, he gets angry and he cusses. He says, no, I don't know this man. Soon after that, Judas realizes what he did. He's, he's filled with remorse. And so he finds Caiaphas, the high priest, takes the money, gives him to them. He says, listen, I, this is wrong. I, I, Jesus is an innocent man. This, this, is, this is wrong. I, I did wrong. And uh, Caiaphas looks at him and says, hey, man, that's, that's your problem. That's not ours. So he takes the money, throws it at their feet, goes off, and, and hangs himself. All again, this is, this is all Good Friday. Soon after that, Jesus is before Pilate. If you remember the Pilate, he, he washes his hands. He says, I, th 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 this, this man's blood, he's, he's innocent. His blood's on you, not me. And um, at that moment, soldiers are, are, are take Jesus away. They beat him. They whip him. Uh, they, they, they grab his beard. They, they pluck it from his face. Uh, punch him. Uh, that's where they get the crown of thorns and put him on his head. Uh, Jesus is given the, uh, to be led down the Via Della Rosa, which means the sorrowful way. Then as soon after that, he's crucified, dead, and buried. This was one day. This was Good Friday. Good Friday was a very, very busy day. Now, that's not abnormal. We, we, we've all had busy days. We get busy with... Um, with errands, we get busy with our to-do list, we get busy on vacation especially, uh, searching for toilet paper, whatever the case may be, uh, but we get busy in life. I heard of, a, uh, of this couple, they're on vacation, they're busy, and they're vacation, and uh, I don't know if you ever had an unexpected emergency on vacation. Typically that's a, uh, you know, I'm not feeling well, fever, uh, maybe maybe you've blown out a tire, some, some kind of uh, uh, emergency like that. Well, their emergency was actually at a dentist. So they have to head to the emergency dentist, and the wife goes up to the dentist and says, listen, I, I need you to pull a tooth. Uh, I, I don't want any Novocaine. Uh, I'm, I'm in a hurt, huge hurry. Uh, just extract the tooth as quickly as possible, and we'll be on our way. And, and, and golf, the term is, Grip it and rip it. And that's what she wanted. She wanted the dentist to grip the tooth, rip it out, and off they go. So the dentist was, I mean, he's never heard that before. He was pretty impressed. He said, well, you're certainly a pretty strong, courageous woman. Which tooth is it? So the woman turned to her husband and says, show him the tooth, honey. Life gets busy. We get unexpected emergencies on a regular basis. Here we are in John chapter 18, verse 18. This is Peter's first denial. So Jesus has been arrested. He, uh, Peter falls behind and he's, he's at the fire. And Jesus had been arrested. The disciples had scattered. And here we are in verse number 18. It says this, Because it was cold, the household servants and the guards had made a charcoal fire. They stood around it, warning themselves, and Peter stood with them, warming himself. The emphasis here I want us to grab a hold of is that, that charcoal fire. There's only two times in Scripture the charcoal fire that actually appears, in, and it's this one, and again, after the resurrection. So right now, it's before the resurrection. The second one takes place after the resurrection. So after the resurrection, Jesus is now ascended. He's, he's already appeared to his disciples. He's already appeared to Timothy. Remember, Timothy says uh, to the rest of the disciples and apostles, listen, if, if I see Jesus' holes, if I see his hands, if I see the scar on the side, if I see the feet, then, then, then and only then I'll, I'll, I'll believe him. If I put my fingers there, then I'll believe him. Well, Jesus has done that. He showed him, look, look touch, feel. I, I really am Jesus. I really am raised from the dead. So he's already done that. He's already seen Thomas. So here we are in John chapter 21 now. The disciples have been fishing all night. I don't know if you've ever been there where you just, man, I just don't know what to do. And these guys are fishermen. They're professional at, at, the, at, their, at their craft. They're professional fishermen. Uh, before they became an apostle, they, they, they were fishermen. Come, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. They were fishermen. And so they looked at each other like, I, I'm going fishing. So a group of them went to go fishing. Now, these guys are professional fishermen. They know what to use for baits. They know where to go. 
They know when to go. They're professional fishermen. For some reason, these professional fishermen go out all night long and caught nothing. Nothing. And finally, from the, uh, from the beach, you hear this voice saying, Have you caught anything? Isn't that the most natural question you could possibly ask a fisherman? You're walking on the shoreline. You're walking on the pier. You see him uh, riding by the boats. And it, you can't help but ask, have you caught anything today? Are they biting today? It's just, you can't help but say it. And Jesus does it. He looks at the disciples and says, have you caught anything? And then he says this, throw out your net on the right side of the boat. I wonder if at that moment the disciples thought to themselves, oh great, we get this, we get this advice from someone who's probably never even been fishing, going to tell us professional fishermen when and how to fish. All right, you know what, let's just do it. So reluctantly, they take the nets, they throw it on the right side of the boat, and what do they do? They caught a huge amount of fish. It's at that moment where Peter said, that's Jesus. That's the Lord. You know, Mr. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know who he is. And Peter says, that's the Lord. So he's so, so amped up, he jumps out of the boat, swims about 100 yards or so, Swims to shore. Jesus is preparing them breakfast, breakfast for them. So here we are. John chapter 21, verse number 9 says this. When they, the disciples, when they got there, got to the seashore, they found breakfast waiting for them. Fish cooking, and here it is, over a charcoal fire. It's the second time it's found in Scripture. Of all the... Of all the different types of fires that, that, that Jesus could have started to cook the fish, why would Jesus use the same exact type of fire that Peter stood at when he denied Christ? What a, what a horrible memory that is. What a horrible reminder. The fire was a reminder of a place of broken fellowship, of broken relationship with Jesus. It reminded Peter that he was in a place with the wrong company. And the charcoal fire was a reminder of the time when he denied Christ. It was also a place where Peter resigned his ministry. He resigned from his calling. Now we know the end of the story. We know Peter gets back on the boat. We know Peter becomes a great warrior for Christ. He really does become the rock of the church. But at this time, in Peter's viewpoint, Peter's first initial thought possibly could have been, Jesus is about to get me. He hasn't got me yet. He know I denied him. He's seen me a couple times. And Jesus, he's, 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 here to, he's here to give me a tongue lashing. I don't know if you've ever been in these places, but uh, when I was in elementary school, I was walking home. Me and my brother and my sister were walking home from elementary school. And I remember our friend that we were walking to his house, he was so excited that we were, gonna, we were coming with him because it was report card day and he didn't do so well. And so he was saying to us, I'm so happy you're here because I think my mom is going to be a little more lenient because you guys are at the house. I will tell you, he was not accurate in his thinking. She tore into him as if we were not even there. I wonder if that's what Peter thought. I wonder if that's why he jumped out of the boat first. I'm gonna get there ahead because I don't want my guys to see me get a tongue lashing. It's, it's, a, it's an awkward moment to be yelled, being yelled at by, by your boss, by your leader, by your parent, and your friends are like watching. It's, it's, it's a tough place. But I believe Jesus did it for a different reason. I believe he turned this negative memory that Peter had of a charcoal fire and he turned it into a positive. See, originally warming up around a charcoal fire brought memories of failure, loneliness, ashamed. But Jesus takes this same fire, the same type of fire, and turns it into a place of, of loving feast with Christ. Remember what he said, children, do you have anything to eat? Eat. Fill. Enjoy the fish. 
Jesus turns a charcoal fire into a place of self-realization. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Take care of them. Watch out for them. Do you love me? This charcoal fire went from a disgraced memory to restoration. It became a place of a reappointment to ministry. Like God is not done with Peter yet. So what does this, what does this mean for us today? What is the so what now what in this lesson? I don't know what comes to your mind when you think charcoal fire. I don't know what your charcoal fire might be. Your moment of aloneness, torment, weakness, whatever it might be. Maybe it's a conversation with an individual, a family member, a coworker. Maybe it was a specific task at your job that you're supposed to do. Perhaps it's, perhaps it's when you wore that specific outfit, that suit, that dress, those shoes. Maybe, maybe it's a certain genre of music or, or a specific song or artist. Whatever, whatever that charcoal fire, that element of, 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 of moment for you that reminds you of something of weakness. I believe God wants to restore us to that, to, 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 to ministry. He wants to restore and recommission us to his calling. This charcoal fire with the wrong people around was a place of torture, brokenness, and failure. But in the right company, the charcoal fire was a place of, of feasting, uh, healing, restoring. I may look at these walls. I don't know where, what your walls are. Maybe your walls are literally the walls of your house. Maybe the walls of, of isolation is the walls of your job. Job, work, work, job. Whatever your walls of isolation might be. Maybe it's those long lines at Home Depot trying to get in there. I don't know what your walls might be. But my charcoal fire, what your charcoal fire is, perhaps God brought us here today for you to listen to this lesson, to be here to be restored to him, to be fed by him to regain your strength, get back on the horse and start ministry once again. A charcoal fire is not the issue. It's, it's not the problem. I am. The music wasn't the problem. The song wasn't the problem. The outfit was not the problem. That conversation was not the problem. The problem is this. If I, be, if I can be fed by God, allow his word to penetrate me, that fire could be lit again, to be restored. I just need you to picture that before I close. Peter soaking wet, dripping wet from swimming to the sh uh, shoreline. And as he's going towards Jesus, because he knows it's Jesus, he's going to, he's going to the, uh, Jesus and where he's located. And he sees Jesus at a charcoal fire, warming his hands. The exact same way Peter was warming his hands. But the difference is Jesus was there and it was restoring. When Peter was there and Jesus was over here, I don't know. But now Jesus is in the exact same place Peter was and her strength. The fire is not the issue. Who are you with with the fire? Jesus wants to restore you, renew you, and build you back up for ministry. God has got a calling on your life. Be renewed, be refreshed today. Let's pray. God, we just thank you for being a, being a great God, a great cook, that you prepare a meal for us. God, help us to be used by you, to, to feed, to strengthen ourselves. God, help us to feed your sheep. Guide us and direct us. Restore us once again and renew us. In Jesus' name, amen. We love you. We appreciate you. We will see you soon. God bless.